praise the Lord from Pastor Strader at Lighthouse Church. Thanks for connecting with us through our podcast. Our prayer is that it's a blessing to you as we try to reach, equip, and mobilize Jesus' name disciples in Apache Junction, Arizona, and the surrounding region. Enjoy today's podcast and come back often. God bless you. We love you. Well, praise the Lord, everybody. Feels good here this morning. Amen and amen and amen. Praise God. Brother Javier, if you'd get those ready. Amen. Praise God. As you're being seated, and if you have if you have not received one of the uh, little pots with a, a, a plant, and we have several, we have plenty, so we want to at this time hand those out. Raise your hand if you don't have one, and they'll get the ushers will come around and give you one of those. Just keep your hands lifted as you see him come around. Amen and amen and amen. This is Vision Sunday. Praise God. So what we're going to talk about? Vision. (laughs) Amen. And thank God for a move of the Holy Ghost that is here this morning. Amen. Thank God for all of our guests that are with us, uh, returning guests. We love you. We appreciate you. We thank you for being here. Amen. And we ask you to come back and be with us again. Amen. And for all the church family, this is the best church, church family. Amen. Aren't you thankful for your church? Praise God. Amen and amen. And I, it's already beginning to happen as I felt it would happen is that people are already beginning to, God is beginning to put in their heart. As you saw, as we came into the sanctuary, our theme for 2024 is grow. Amen. And so we're going to talk a little bit about that and what that means. And so people, God's already putting in the hearts of people and uh, of, of various scriptures that God has been really just dealing with me over the past several months. This is not something that God gave me uh, just a couple days ago. This is several months ago. God spoke to me and, and gave some direction for where we are headed in 2024. Amen. And our last year's theme was now. Amen. And Brother Crumb, we came into my office today and he said, well, I was thinking it should be grow now. But then God said, no, it's now grow. And I said, I like that. Now grow. So last year was now and this year is going to be growth. Amen. Everybody say amen. Amen. Praise God, praise God. And uh, we're going to talk about more about what, what, what I mean by growth, because what I mean by growth is not just in number. The carnal mind would love to go towards the, the, the growth of people and numbers and money and all these things, but uh, we're going to talk about what, what that means. But before we do, I want to just really... Uh, and I'll, I'll, when we, when we, this is really more of probably lends itself to uh, maybe another setting. So it's going to be a little different today. But children, I want you to grab your, everybody, I want you to have one of those pots, those watering pots. And I want you to just kind of hold on to it. And you're going to understand a little bit about what, uh, what it is and, and why and all of that. We got a couple other, still hands are being lifted and, and they're passing those out now. Amen and amen. But Sister Angela, you have those slides. I want you, if you would, I want to just, we, we do our best to track numbers and try to have some level of, 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 of a barometer of what is happening. And, uh, and so some of these numbers may not be exactly accurate, but I, we have absolutely been a bit more conservative in our numbers, meaning we haven't tried to report more. In fact, we've tried to really report less because uh, it, it, we want to be as honest as possible with the results and with the numbers. Um, and so I'm just going to go through some great successes and some great things that God has done. And I want to emphasize God. It's not me, I, it's not even us, it is God. Amen. And we're just privileged. Amen. I'm privileged to pastor here and you are privileged to be a part of the church of the living God. Yeah. Praise God. And so we're just going to rejoice for a little bit. And I, I hope these numbers don't just come across to you as, as, uh, as just a casual. 
And some of them may seem like we can do better. And that's the kind of spirit that I want us to have is that there is more to be had. But in 2023, we saw at least and definitely more than 25 were baptized in Jesus name and or received the gift of the Holy Ghost for the first time ever right here in these altars. Amen. Uh, over 35, and there's this number here could probably be way more, but over 35 notable miracles were had in 2023. This does not include the miracles where we would go and we would count where there'd be 15 at a time. These were notable miracles that I've got stories behind that people's come to me or text me and said, God has healed my body. Over 35 of those notable miracles our Sunday attendance is up year over year, 21%. Amen. If we look at year over year, on this time frame that we looked, it was up 21%. Our Wednesday attendance is also up on average 6% every year. And this past Wednesday, I, I was so thrilled to see our friends in fellowship. We had, in, from what I could see in our history, recent history, we had more people on Wednesday, this past Wednesday, than we've ever had. We had over 85 people in Jesus' name. Amen. And that was for friends and fellowship, so that tells you how good the preaching is on Wednesday. Yeah. Praise God. <laughs> Amen. I love that. That just makes me, I love it. Praise God. But I tell you what, I told Pastor Sansom, I said, I don't care how they get here. Let's just get them here and get the word of God in them. <laughs> Praise God. And I'm going to tell you what, they've got to love us before they can fall in love with God most of the time. Amen. We've had incredibly powerful services. Amen. And that is continuing in 2024 as represented here today. I, I commend this church for your worship. I commend this church for uh, coming in on a Sunday morning and saying, we're going to have a move of God today. I commend you for every time you've come and you've not felt like it, but you did it anyway. I commend you every time you've, you've been weary on a Sunday afternoon, but you still came on Sunday night and participated to the atmosphere and you participated in what God is doing. And I'm going to tell you what, the dream that you heard today, I'm going to tell you there's going to be more people that have dreams like that. And, I, and, I, and there's been others that had dreams. Brother Rick told me about a dream where, where there was a snake, I believe, on the, on the top of the church and, and there were things trying to come into the church and, and they couldn't come into the church because the blood of God was on the church. I'm telling you, if you're not tapped into it, I'm asking you tap into it because God is about to do something great. Praise God. God blessed us with an incredible van. And we're so thankful for that. And we've, we've almost got it complete. We borrowed money from our sales and we've almost got that completely paid off, but we still have a little ways to go in Jesus name. We had incredible preaching and teaching. Different preachers come in and preach incredible messages that, man, my heart is just stirred as I go back. And I, we had Brother Sparks. We had Brother Zapoli come in. We, I've got them listed here. We got Brother Muse. We had Brother Foster. Pastor Sansom came. And we had Brother Corbin come and do our, our gifts of the Spirit and, and all the different things and so many more that came in. But what I'm very proud of, what I'm so thankful for, is that we are beginning to develop our own own preachers and our own young teachers in Jesus name and I'm telling you this will be a sending church amen it's not going to happen overnight but this will be a sending church what does that mean that means we're not just trying to get people here to stay here but we're trying to get enough people here that we can afford to send people into the field of harvest and become evangelists missionaries preachers pastors teachers Amen. Sure, there will be a many that will stay here, and that is great. But I'm telling you, we will be a sending church in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We completed, this is an incredible accomplishment. I um, give all of our all honor to our, our coaches and great honor to all of our Bible quizzers because we completed for the first time in the history of our church, amen, our first year of Bible quizzing. Let's give a hand to our coaches and our quizzers. Hey Amen. We've done a lot of cleaning up, a lot of remodeling, but one thing that just highlights in my mind in 2023 is that 
uh, we remodeled our annex with new flooring, new trim. We bought new chairs and new tables. And all of those tables and chairs are going to go with us into the new uh, facility that God is going to give us. Amen. We've had record offerings across the board. You want to know how are we doing financially? We're doing well financially because people are giving sacrificially. I mentioned a few weeks ago our offerings are down and that probably remains still true, but people are still giving sacrificially to the things of God. And I, the lights are going to remain on as long as I'm here, as long as I can, you know, I have to pay it out of my own pocket. And I know some of you would pay it out of your own pocket if I asked you to, but that's not what we're going to do because God is going to provide every need that we have. Praise God. We had record offerings. Over $100,000 was given to various ministries from this local church. I, I can't tell you how incredible that is. Could we have kept $100,000 here and used it for our own things? Absolutely. But I'm telling you what we are doing when we send that money into the mission field, when we're sending it to build, uh, to buy vehicles for missionaries, when we send that money to plant churches, when you're, you're giving to save our children, when you do that, you are are putting seeds into the harvest field. And when we will seek first the kingdom of God, then everything else. Amen. Well, let, let's just take care of what God's asking us to take care of. He'll take care of us. I give high honor to this incredible church for those people who, you, whether you pledge or you don't pledge, but you give what God has told you to give. Amen. I thank you for not just pledging a number so that we can have a high number, but you're giving what you have pledged. Amen. Thank you for your sacrificial giving. We improved our follow-up process, and I won't go in great detail with that, but we're trying to do our best to close our back doors as people come in. We're trying to do what we can to, keep, to encourage them to stay and to know that we're a friendly church and that we want them here and that their family is welcome here and that we need them here, that we're, we're building something here. Everybody say we're building something. We're building a culture of apostolic culture here in this church. And we do that by building great relationships. I can't tell you how many times I heard, and I encourage you, if you're not already doing this, do it. Don't wait until next week. Do it. Do it now. But I can't tell you how many times I've heard, I'll just put some quotes up there. I've heard people say, hey, come and join us for pickleball, or let's do a Bible study together, or, or hey, you know what, let's go grab lunch together today. And I'm going to tell you what, it's so easy to get stuck into our own little uh, groups that we've had for several years, but I'm going to tell you, as we we began to grow even more, we're going to have to step outside of that comfort zone and we're going to have to go to our guests and we're going to have to go to our visitors and say, hey, I want to have lunch with you. I want to take you out to dinner. And guess what? It's on my tab. I'll pay for it. Amen. And we don't take them to McDonald's. Chili's will do. Amen. Unless they want to go to McDonald's. Praise God. They have five kids taken to McDonald's. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but this is what builds relationships. This is what sets this what that's what sets the part of what sets this church apart is that we care about people truly, genuinely, authentically. Amen. Amen. When people need help with something, we're there to help them. We're here to encourage them. We're not just there to say hey to them on Sunday morning or Sunday night or Wednesday, but we're there to help them. Amen. We've had new outreach cards come about. We had so much more come. We had over 15 one-on-one -on -one Bible studies that were taught in 2023. Amen. We had record prayer meetings, and I'm going to tell you, our prayer meetings have just gone to another level, and that has poured over into our pre-service prayer meetings, and I'm encouraging us not to let down on that. Push, 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 and pursue after what God has for us. We've done a lot of different great community outreach efforts. I was just talking about it last week but we, uh, with someone, but uh, we, we went out and we gave uh, sandwiches to the homeless. We gave waters to the homeless. We gave, another time, we gave uh, little uh, packs of, of various uh, hygiene products to the homeless. We, we did various outreach where we went and involved ourselves in some of the activities of our city and we, we, we put ourselves there. You know, it may be a little awkward that a church go to that type of event because it's not really, it's not our world. 
But I'm going to tell you what, we are in this world, but we are not of this world. But we are still in this world trying to reach this world. And so sometimes we got to march together into some, maybe something that's a little bit not as comfortable as normal. And we planted a little, a little 10 by 10 booth and we got 12 Bible studies out of it. Amen. That's incredible outreach events. And I'm just talking about some of the things we've done as a group. This is not even including the individual things that people have done, the meals, the, the giving, the all of the various things that people have done individually in this church of community outreach. We have seen our city grow. AJ is about to explode in growth. The surrounding region is about to explode in growth. We're, we're seeing new homes built. If you haven't seen it, go down Ironwood. You'll see it. Amen. But also importantly is our church. I feel a spirit of unity here. And the enemy has tried to come in and try to steal that unity on several occasions. And that's why we've got to be so careful and very aware and keen to his devices. And we've got to, we've got to intentionally uh, make sure that we are pursuing unity in Jesus' name. Praise God. Are we thankful for what God has done? Are we thankful for what God has done? As Brother Gissel played that video, I think it was uh, uh, a couple weeks ago, our kids are here praying and receiving the Holy Ghost. When he played that at our leadership retreat, I couldn't help but the tears were flowing down my cheek. I'm telling you, if you ever wonder why are you doing why what you're doing, why are we why are we keep doing what we're doing, I'm going to tell you that's exactly why we're doing what we're doing. It, if you're just questioning why am I giving to save our children, go watch that video. That's why we're giving. That's why we're faithful. That's why we're doing what we're doing because our kids are going to go to heaven. We're going to reach our city. Hey Amen. Let's just lift our hands or clap our hands and let's thank God for what he has done. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Jesus. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. I'm so grateful for what God has done. And then just this week, God gave us another great blessing. And I won't go in great detail, but God, through a series of, of calls and events, God blessed us with a $6,400 sound system for $1,500 just this week. It's set in my office. It'll be installed on the 11th of February. Hey, Amen. We're going to have that installed. It's not everything we need, but it's a big majority of what we need. And what was going to cost us eight grand now has just cost us 1,500 bucks. Praise God. And so what I feel God is saying is that I'm going to provide. It may look different than what you expect, but I am building something. I am, there's going to be growth Amen. If we could turn to our Bibles and go to 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 18. And I want you to make sure everybody has your little, your little watering pots and your, your, your shovels. And uh, if you want, you can take those home. And they're actually spoons, so you can use them as spoons. <laughs> but they're spoons in the form of a, of a fork or a, a, a shovel. Amen. Let's stand today at the reading of the Word of God. 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 18. So we're thankful for what God has done, but what is God telling the church today? What is God telling us? What is he asking of us to do? Second Peter, Peter 3 and 18. But grow, everybody say grow, grow. In, grace. in grace and in the knowledge, in the knowledge. of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I could easily preach, bless God, we're going to fill a stadium with people. But what I feel what God is asking of this church is to grow in grace. And in knowledge. <laughs> Maybe that will be fixed once we get everything going. Praise God. It's, 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 it's Brother Wiseman's and I desire to get it fixed. A couple other things too. But grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Not to be glory for us, but to him be glory both now and forever. Amen. 
Well, I want us to talk about growing the church. We are. Because the deeper that we grow, you see, we want to talk about levels. A lot of times I'm guilty of saying we need to take it to another level. We think of levels as higher. But that's really not what I, the intention of what I'm saying. What I'm talking about is going to another level in the soil. Grow a little bit deeper. Because the deeper that we grow, the stronger we become. And when the winds blow, we're stayed, we're deep into the roots of the word of God. When adversity comes, we're like we're just like a tree planted by the water. We ain't moving. Amen. We're growing in grace and in knowledge of our Lord, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. For him to be glorified forever and ever. 1 Corinthians, you don't have to turn there, but if you want to, you can. 1 Corinthians 3, 5 through 9. I'm going to let you be seated in just a moment. 1 Corinthians 3, 5 through 9. I hear pages turn, so I'm going to wait. Because this is important that we read the word of God. Who then is Paul and who is Apollos, but ministers by whom ye believed, even as the Lord gave to every man? He said, I have planted. Paul saying this, I have planted. And Apollos watered. But God gave the increase. So then, neither is he that planteth anything, neither he that watereth, but God that giveth the increase. Now he that planteth and he that watereth are separated. He that planteth and he that watereth is greater one to the other. Now he that planteth and he that watereth, everybody help me, are one. Man shall receive his own reward according to his or her own labor. For we are laborers together. Preach with me, together. We are laborers together with God. You're not by yourself today. We ain't going to grow. This church is not going to grow being solo by, by, by pulling your, yourself outside of the group. But you're going to have to plug yourself in. Amen. You're going to have to get into the vein of what God is doing. Amen. We are laborers together with God. Ye are God's husbandry. He's saying you are God's field. Ye are God's building. Amen and amen. You may be seated. God bless you. I know we have our children here today, and I know that children, I may be boring. I love how Brother Soto said it. I'm a great solution to insomnia. Praise God. But I'm asking all of our kids and all of our young people, of course, every adult, to listen to this this morning because you are a vital, important part of what is about to happen this year. I'm not just saying that, but hear me, children. You are a vital, important part of what God is doing at Lighthouse Church. Amen. What do I mean by grow? In our leadership retreat, we just I kind of just set some high-level vision for this theme. We want to grow in the depth of the knowledge of Jesus. We want to grow in our personal devotions and prayer life. We want to grow in the fruit of the Spirit. We want to grow heaven by keeping souls our, phone, our, our focus. We want to grow in our effectiveness of disciple making. We want to grow and have revival as never before. Now grow. You see, the Bible is filled with farming and agricultural references and parables. Jesus lived in an agricultural society in which the majority of people would have had experiences living on farms or working with food crops or livestock. His audience would have largely included shepherds and grape growers and wheat farmers and laborers of fruit orchards and families raising livestock 
as just a few examples. And as the son of a carpenter in the Middle East 2,000 or so years ago, Jesus would have had exposure to this agricultural society lifestyle even uh, if, if he never worked on a farm himself. His family might have very well raised chickens and tended a vegetable plot which would have taught him about the manner of a hen mothering her flock or the surprise of weeds growing up among the crop that had been sown or how some seeds fall on good earth while others never produce or produce poorly. So it is the natural that Jesus would have used concrete examples from his daily life and the lives of those that he was reaching and the lives of those around him to teach parables on farming and agricultural parables. The Bible is filled with truths on, based on this idea of farming or agricultural principles. We, we see it throughout scripture. It speaks of sow wickedness and then you will reap something else. He said in Proverbs 6, 14, when you see that soweth discord. Another verse that said, a froward man soweth strife. He that soweth, what does that word sow mean? It means he plants it. <coughs> he takes that seed and he plants it. He that soweth iniquity shall reap. What does that word reap mean? That means harvest. If you sow something, you put it in the ground, what happens when you put it in the ground and you water it and you tend to it? It begins to sprout. It begins to grow. That's what he's saying here is that when, what you, when you sow iniquity, you will harvest vanity. And when you have sown the wind, and they shall reap the whirlwind. It hath no stalk. The bud shall yield no meal. We see this in, in sin. They have sown wheat, but you shall reap thorns. Put ye in the sickle, for the harvest is ripe. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. These are just various scriptures throughout the word of God. But we see this concept of what we call the law of harvest in the spiritual sense of sowing. He says, if you will sow in tears... You will reap in joy. If you, will, if you will plant with tears, you will get a harvest of joy. <coughs> he that wears, he that, that sows, excuse me, wears, I got this all wrong. Psalms 126.6. Somebody go to that 126.6. You can get it. We'll go back to it. Blessed are ye that sow beside all waters in Isaiah. The harvest is, in Matthew 9 is plenteous. The harvest is great. But the laborers, the word of God says, are few. The harvest is coming. Behold, I saw unto you, lift up your eyes and look on the fields for they are white already to harvest. You close your eyes with me this morning and envision our city. <coughs> envision our region. I see souls. Tune your ear into the harvest and you'll hear the cry of the people. Crying out, help me, reach me, pray for me. I'm sick. I'm lonely. I'm in need. The word of God said, let us not be weary in well doing for in due season, talking about the harvest. In due season, we shall harvest, we shall reap if we faint not. When the hay is removed, Proverbs says, and new growth appears and the grass from the hills are gathered in. In Matthew, Mark, and Luke, there's a whole parable on the sower. I'm telling you, God's, God's using this agricultural foundation and principles to teach us something. There's a whole parable about the sower that teaches us about the four types of ground that are revealed, the path, the, the stony ground, the thorny ground, and the good soil. That there's nine attributes of the Christian life that is inspired by the Holy, that's given by the Holy Ghost, and that is love, joy, 
peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And God calls them all fruits. Everybody with me today? He calls them all fruits to show the power, the transformative power of the Holy Ghost. Jesus likened the kingdom of God to a mustard seed in Matthew 13. He said, the kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed, which a man took and planted in his field. Though it is the smallest of all seeds, when yet when it grows, everybody say, when it grows. It is the largest of garden plants and becomes a tree so that the birds come and perch in its branches. If we want souls, we've got to grow some branches. And the only way you can grow branches is to grow. Everybody say grow. The only way that the birds can come and perch is to have the branches in which they can come and perch. And he said, I'm gonna use a mustard seed. What does that mean? He's gonna use the smallest of seeds to grow the largest of trees to reach the world. So my first point is this. Don't discredit how small, how inadequate you feel. Because when you start doing that, you're starting to make it all about you. But he's saying it's not the power that you have. It's the power that is within you that I have given you through the power of the Holy Ghost. So when we start talking big things like teach Bible studies, it's not about what I can do. It's about what he can do through me. When we start talking about we need to begin laying hands on people on our job. We need to begin laying hands on people and seeing people receive miracles out there, not just within these four walls. I'm talking, you may say, well, I, it's not about I, it's about the power of the Lord. Well, I can never win a soul. I can never be a witness. If you have the Holy Ghost, he said he would give you power to be a witness. Don't despise small things, the word of God says. It's the mustard seed. But before God can bring more in, we've got to enlarge the pasture. We've got to enlarge our territory. We've got to enlarge our capacity. Friend, your capacity is not God's problem. <coughs> Your capacity is not God's problem. Your capacity is your problem. My capacity is my problem. What are you saying? In the story where the prophet said, go get as many pots, many vessels as you can. Bring them in. They're coming for your sons. Go out and borrow not a few vessels, but bring them in and I'll fill them up. And I'm going to tell you what happened with these vessels. He said, I'm going to feel whatever you bring. He, what he was saying was, as much as you want, get them into the house. The capacity is your, your responsibility. How deep you want to grow is on you. I'm going to give you the word of God. I'm going to teach the word of God. I'm going to give inspiration. I'm going to give great principles. I'm going to bring a preacher to teach to you. We're going to talk about holiness. We're going to talk about separation. We're going to talk about the grace of God, the love of God. We're going to talk about great principles of what it means to be a Christian. But it is up to you. It is up to you. One of the greatest lies that I hear from a lot of people is that I'm no longer being fed there. I'm going to tell you, you, you've not lost food. You've lost an appetite. You need an appetite. You need an appetite. What we need is not greater food. We need more hunger. What we need is not fresh water. We need, oh my God. So often we want a new word of God. What about the word yesterday? What about the word last year? Why does God always have to give you a fresh word? Why can't he not give you a word and you stand on the word of God and see it come to pass? Why are you looking for a pastor or for a preacher or for somebody to come to you? Give me a fresh word. What he needs you to do is be consistent. What he wants you to do is be firm on a foundation and stand on the word of God. This is the word that you need. And if we want this church to grow, and I'm telling you it's going to in Jesus' name, we've got to not look at anything else, but we got to look right here in our hearts. 
And we got to say, how can I grow deeper in the word of God? How can I expand my prayer life? How can I expand what I'm doing in my fasting and my sacrificial giving? How can I expand in what, in what God is asking me to do? How can I become a better witness? Yeah. It's your problem. It's my problem. The capacity. God, we want to expand the pasture. And I'm going to tell you, if we're not very careful, we'll become apathetic. We'll become satisfied where we don't want to plant anymore. We don't want to grow anymore because I'm going to tell you, growing hurts. You want to know what, what really has to happen before you grow? Anybody know? Anybody a farmer? Anybody ever, you want, to, you want to see something grow? What is one of the first things you have to do? If you have something that is kind of looking kind of rough, what do you first, it's got all kinds of branches everywhere, man, it's crazy. What do you first do? You got to prune that, Sister Dory, don't you? You got you to get out the hacksaw. You got to get out those. Thank you. Prunes, yeah, pruners, whatever they're called. I'm, I don't farm. If any on a keyboard, I don't do it. All right? You know what I'm talking about. But you got to prune some things. Church, if we want to grow deeper in the word of God, in the knowledge of the Lord, young people, children, hear me. If you want to grow in the knowledge of God, you're going to have to enlarge your capacity. How do you enlarge your capacity? By pruning. Get rid of that social media. Get rid of that entertainment. Get rid of those friends that are taxing on my soul. Get rid of these things, uh, this music. Get rid of all this trash. Get rid of this uh, worldly dressing. Get rid of all this worldly garbage of music. Get rid of all these things. Why? But, but my friends do it. But we go, my friends go there. My friends do it. Friend, I'm drawing a line in the sand. And I'm saying, I want my capacity and me and my children to be enlarged. And the only way God is going to give us more is if we will enlarge our capacity and one of the greatest ways to enlarge your capacity is to get less of this world and more of him. Who wants to grow? Who wants to see your family come in and be saved? I'm telling you, if we had just a few prodigals of every family coming to this building, look around. We don't even have the seats for them. We'd be sitting on the floor with our family, but I'm telling you, they're coming. I'm telling you, they're coming. You keep praying, Mama. You keep praying, Grandmama. You keep praying, Daddy. I'm telling you, they're coming. I hear their feet marching toward the church. I hear their feet marching to an altar of prayer because God's about to do something great. He's about to grow the kingdom of God. But you got to seek first the kingdom and you got to desire growth. Strange, I don't know if you started that 30 minutes before I started doing the, the previous stuff, did you? You didn't? Help us, God. I thought maybe you started it when we started going and talking. Okay, I'm cutting 15 minutes off that. <laughs> Praise God. Here's what I want to talk about this morning, because there's no way I can cover all of this in one service. You would grow weary. You would turn me off. And, and I would be a great solution for insomnia. I don't desire that, because I want us to get what I've, I've wrestled with this, what the point this morning is. Children, this is where I need your help. Grab your, your pots. If you don't have a pot, grab a shovel. I need everybody to grab one of the, grab that. Because I'm going to teach us the principle that I feel this morning. There'll be another principle tonight. But there's one principle in grow that we must understand. He said, Jesus likened the kingdom of God to the end times in Matthew 13 and 38. He likened it in Matthew 13. So Crumbly, you sent me that, that scripture. I already had it in here. Amen. But 1 Corinthians 3, Sister Angela, if you can, I don't know if you can pull the NIV or not, but I'm going to read the NIV because I want to try to get us from reading to comprehension real quick. And sometimes it's easier when you look at a different version. But it says, The fields is the world. The field is the world. The field is the world. The field. 
I know this is going to be controversial. controversial. I know some people are not going to like it. The field is not the church building. And you know, I mean, I'm in church as, as often as I can be. And I mean it. You know it, and a lot, many of you are as well. We're here. But this is not the field. That's the field. The field is the world. All right, moving on. And the good seed stands for the gospel of the kingdom. The weeds are the people of the evil one. And the enemy who sows them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the harvesters are angels. And the weeds are pulled up and burned in the fire, so it will be at the end of the age. Amen. Now, let's go to 1 Corinthians. That was Matthew. 13, 38. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 3, 1 through 5. Brothers and sisters, I'm going to connect this all. I could not address you as people who live by the Spirit, but as people who are still worldly. He says, I'm addressing you not as spiritual people to the Corinthian church. I'm addressing you as worldly people. Praise God. Mere infants in Christ. Verse two, I gave you milk, not solid food, for you were not ready for it. Indeed, you are still not ready. If we are not careful, we'll stay in this infancy stage forever. And milk is good. Everybody's shallow at one point. Everybody's just a couple inches deep in the soil at some point. But friend, there's got to be a time. There's got to be a season where that seed begins to grow. And friend, it doesn't grow up first. We need to get this out of our idea, this mind that, bless God, I'm the pastor, I'm the leader, I'm the this, I'm the that. What? I like how Brother Soto said this weekend, in their org chart that they have, we don't have an org chart here, but we'll have one at some point. But he said, in our org chart, in our church, I mean, they got a huge church. He said, you would think the pastor would be at the top and then under that, the administration, under that, this. He said, no, I'm at the bottom. And then from the bottom comes our administrative team and, and pastoral staff. And then from then goes our leaders. And then from then goes our teachers. And then from then on and on and on. Listen, it's not going up. It's about going down, going deeper. We see this in servanthood. He said, I am your servant. He, he didn't go up. He came down. He came down from heaven. He, he came down to a stack of hay and was born. He came down into the room of his disciples and he literally stooped down and watched their feet. You want to grow in God? Stop trying to reach forward to something and start reaching down to something. Get a hold of a prayer life. Get a hold of the word of God. I'm telling you, church, we're going to grow when we get this concept that we've got to get a hold of something of substance. I'm going to tell you, we've got to learn, and I, 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 I'm going to do better, I promise you. And I, I know that I, this is no knock at anybody or any person, but we've got to be better at receiving teaching and then responding in the Spirit. That's what growth is. Growth says, I can hear teaching and still have a move of God. I can hear teaching and still think, man, that was an incredible service. It's not just about the, the, the music and the hype and the great yelling and screaming and the great preaching. And I love it. I mean, that's my lane. I love all of that. But I'm telling you, if we really want to grow, we've got to go down deeper. We got to search the word. We got to search the scriptures. You got to turn off Netflix. You got to turn off your television. You need to get rid of it anyway. You need to get rid of that stuff. And you need to start looking down and getting into the roots. You need to turn off some music. You need to turn off some shit. You need to turn off some jobs and you got to say, I got to make time for it. I'm losing some people, but I'm asking you not to be lost. I'm telling you, stay on the train with me today because that's what it's going to take. 
You want to go, you want this thing to go up, you want you want a new building, you want new more people, I do too. But we're not gonna do it by only looking up. We're gonna do it by looking how deep can we go. My God, we gotta grow deeper. My Lord, we gotta we gotta get more people where they're 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 not just it's not just the pastor, and I'm not trying to give myself any credit that I that I don't deserve, but I'm telling you, it's gotta be more than just the leadership, it's gotta be more than just the people on the platform that holds the guidelines and call it standards if you want to, but there's gotta be a church that says I desire holiness. I desire to be holy for he is holy. I don't do what I do just because I'm on a platform, just because I'm asked to serve in a visible area of ministry, but I'm doing it because I'm trying to grow deeper into the word, into the grace and the knowledge of God. This is not easy. This is not easy. He said, you are still worldly. You're mere infants. I gave you milk and not solid food for you are not ready for it. I hope to God, God doesn't pass us by. He doesn't withhold the meat because he says, you're not ready. You're not ready for it. You want a hundred people, you want a hundred kids in your Sunday school, you ain't ready for it. You want a church of 300, you ain't ready for it. You, you want a youth group of 100? You ain't ready for it. I don't want him to be able to say that. But we've, we've got to be, in, that's why we've got to be intentional about this thing. And we've got to say, hey, I, I'm ready. I'm ready to grow some branches. I'm ready to grow some love and some joy and some long suffering and some forbearance and, and some self-control. I'm, I'm going to tell you, it's not, the, it's not the fanciest word to say, but I want to be a prayer warrior. Praise God. Let's lift our hands and love God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. He said, you are still worldly, verse three, for since there is jealousy and quarreling among you, are you not worldly? Where are you going, Pastor? I, I, hang with me, I promise. I'll be done in just a few moments. But you've got to hear the word of God. Are you not acting like mere humans? Well, I'm human. We are spiritual beings because the Spirit of God lives within you. You are a new creature. You are a new man. You are a new woman. Stop acting like the old you. That's what he's saying. You're acting like mere humans. For when one says, I follow Paul, and another, I follow Apollos. He's saying, you look at, I, I follow him. The other, other side of the church saying, well, I follow Apollos. Not the will of God. Are you not mere human beings? It marks a change in the way Paul addressed the Corinthians. He began to use the term spiritual differently, employing it now to mean mature Christians over carnal Christians. Hear me, I'm not saying lost Christian, Christians, but mature Christians. In Paul's estimation, the Corinthians were largely carnal. All right, let's go to verse five. What, after all, is Apollos and what is Paul? Only servants. Everybody say servants. Only servants through whom you come to believe as the Lord has assigned to each his task. I planted the seed, he said. I planted the seed. I planted the seed. But Apollos came and took that watering can and he watered the seed. But God has been making it grow. God gave the increase. It's not about me, Paul, and it's not about Apollos, but it's all about what we're doing for the kingdom of God and what God gives the increase. It's not about my ability and my talent. It's not about what I'm doing. Well, I'm, I'm doing more than anybody else in the church. I'm, I'm at the church more than anybody else. We're here more than anybody else. We're, 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 we're the only ones that care. We're the only ones. That is the spirit of a carnal Christian. That is the spirit of someone on milk. But I'm telling you, church, we need to get a hold of this today. There's one person that plants. 
And there's another person that waters. But God is the one that gives the increase. The one who plants and the one who waters have one purpose. And they will each be rewarded according to their own labor. I want you to reach down to something you have in that pot. It could be the pot itself. And I want you to reach into it. I want you to hold something up. I don't care. Just pick one. I don't care what it is. But I want you to reach down. I want you to hold it up. Just pick something out. I see some shovels. I see a lot of shovels. I see some pots. Where's the, I see, there it is. There's some, there's some trees. There's some, what I would represent as seeds that have bloomed. I'm going to tell you, there's all kinds of, look, everybody look around. There's all kinds of different, I'm going to tell you what, the shovel, Brother Phelps, is not more important than the tree or the seed. Brother Gissel, the, the watering can, where, who, where's the watering can? Gentry, hold that watering can up, buddy. There you go, John. The watering can isn't more sophisticated or great than the shovel. But the, the, what the enemy tries to do is say, well, all you are is a shovel. Brother Gissel, run back there and get that. All you are is a shovel. You, you ain't got no water because you're just, you're just dead. You ain't got no water. You ain't got no seed. I've come to tell you, church, it's gonna, if we're going to grow, it's going to take every kind. Of, it's going to take every person of being faithful and being consistent and saying, hey, I don't care. Maybe I'm th- this week I got the shovel and next week I got the watering can, but we've we got one purpose and one goal in mind, and that is to see that dream come to fruition and that is to see souls receiving the gift of the Holy Ghost. That's to see that dream come to pass where people are slain in the spirit. But begin to dig, brother. But I'm gonna tell you what we gotta do. We need to get a consistent prayer life. And every day we wake up, we gotta dig. Hey, we gotta water it. It's... You got to dig. You got to seek after it. You got to pursue after it. Keep digging, Brother Gissel. Keep digging. It's going to be worth it all. It's going to be worth it all. Every child is worth it all. Hey. And I'm going to tell you what needs to happen. It's already been happening. I already had to told Brother Gissel to do this before it happened. But somebody's got to come along and say, Brother Gissel, yes, you're digging. I'll come alongside you and I'll help you dig. Somebody come. I don't care who it is. Brother Trent, go ahead. Come on, brother. We're going to grab the shovel together and we're going to dig together. That's it. Come on. We're in one motion. We're in one motion. Our vision is aligned. Well, bless God, the Sunday school's growing, but the youth seems to be stagnant. No, we're all winning. We're all seeing victory. We're all being victorious. Oh, God, it seems like that family over there is being more blessed and more favored than me. No, 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 no. Don't you understand? Some people have a shovel and some people have a plant. Come on, I need a couple children to come up here and stand. And I want you to begin to take your plant. I want you to plant it on the altar right now. Oh, come on, keep digging. Just plant your old, I want you to, don't, don't pray, Gracie, not yet. You're, you're, you're good. I want you to put your, your plant on the altar. There it is. We're planting. Go ahead, John. Go ahead and start digging. He's got several shovels. I'm telling you, this is what happens whenever we see growth and it becomes becomes competition and division. Well, bless God, I'm no longer important. I don't have the title anymore. So you know what? I'm going to go find me another church. It is not the will of God. Friend, I don't care who has the title. As long as I don't, I'm going to be honest with you. As long as these altars are filled, I don't care who has the role. I don't care who has the position. I'm telling you, I want souls. I don't care who's digging. I don't care who's watering. I don't care who's planting. But friend, if you ain't moving, get a shovel. Get a seed. Get something and do something something for the kingdom of God. Thank you guys. Just stay right there. Let's stand to this morning. Come on, let's stand. Come on, it's going to take everybody. It's going to take everybody. Well, pastor hasn't asked me to do anything. He hasn't asked me to do anything. I'm going to tell you what the word of God's already asked you to become a witness. Stop looking to be going up. Stop always trying to be elevated and start asking God, how can I grow deeper in the word of God? Your calling will make room for itself. 
Well, they don't know who I am. They don't know the abilities they have. They don't know who, what I, the history I have. Your calling will make room for itself. But until that moment, until you're called upon or until you feel compelled to, hey, I feel to do this. What we need to do is we need to grab a shovel and some of us need to grab a watering can and somebody needs to grab a, 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 a hand of seeds and we need to begin going out there and doing this. Come on. I wish I had seeds. I, was, I had all these things in my head I could do, but this whole altar would be filled with trash. Get your, get your little pot there, bro. I mean, it's, it's a... It, it's a small pot. It really has no significance at all. This is your ministry? This is what you are bringing to the table? It's the mustard seed. It may not look like much, but as one is laying the seed, you're coming behind me. They're over here digging. And I'm casting seeds into the harvest. Ah, it's not about Trent Crumb Weed. It's not about Sister Strader. It's not, I'm, you hear me, it's not about Pastor Strader. I don't want my name attached to it. I want the name of Jesus Christ. But I'm going to tell you, if you're not out there planting, it's time, it's high time. You get a burden for the lost of this city, of this region, of this world. And you need to grab some seeds. And you need to start planting. You need to start watering. Oh, I don't have a ministry. I don't have a title. I don't have a role. Friend, it's time that you change your perspective and you get a hold of the vision of what God's trying to do. He's saying, I'm going to grow this church. I'm going to grow miracles. You think 25 is great feeling with the Holy Ghost? I give God all the glory for it. But God wants to add a zero to that number. I'm telling you in the Holy Ghost. Paul's telling the Corinthian church don't follow the field workers follow the owners of the field follow the, follow the owner of the field church it's time to grow it's time to grow I said it when I opened I'm going to say it again I'm not just talking about in number, but I'm telling you it's time for somebody to grow in the grace and the knowledge of Jesus Christ, our Lord. It's time, it's high time that we grow. And whenever we begin to grow, the love of God in our spirit will begin to expand and that'll make room for somebody to come and perch on the branches. God will begin opening the door. I wonder if God has not opened the door yet because we are not ready. He cares for us enough that he would say, not right now. If I gave it to you now, it would destroy you. What was designed to be a blessing would now be a curse. But if we can begin to grow deep, Oh, dear God. Lord, teach me the ways. Teach me the ways of a Christ-like lifestyle. Don't let me be grow apathetic to the things of this world, but let me seek after souls first. I wonder if God's not opening the door for somebody because there's something, there's pride in the way. There's something in the way that is hindering you God saying just like a parent would care for its child not giving them a cell phone before it's too before it's time everything in me my daughter wants a phone so bad she can taste it I don't mean to embarrass her but she wants a phone great gentry wants a phone I would do my kids a disservice giving a nine-year-old a phone with Wi-Fi, with internet. 
I would not care for their soul as much as the dad in me wants to do it. The spirit dad in me is saying, you care for your child enough, you're not going to give your child That's what God's saying. He said, I love this church enough that I'm not, I know you want it. You can taste it. But you got to grow a little bit more. Oh, I'm thankful for the growth that I've been able to witness the past, especially the past two to three years. I'm so thankful. If you've been around this, around this church any time at all, you could, you could preach with me. You could shake your head. You could say amen. We have seen some incredible growth. Brother Trent, get that shovel. What I'm telling us to do is keep digging. Keep pursuing after it. Don't let the enemy say, that's just a small shovel. You, you, look at Trent's shovel. He's over here. He's got the big, he got the big, the real deal. Look at that water can. It, it means nothing. Look at that little seed. That, look at that little plant that you got. That's absolutely nothing. You can't sing. Look at your plant. Look at this big tree that this person has. I want you to think about the greatest preacher. You Think about the preacher that you, you would just, man, I'd love to hear him any day of the week. Her, I'd love to hear them any day of the week speak. Think of that great preacher. Whatever it is, whoever it is. I'm talking about in this world. You say, man, that, that right there, that, that, I love hearing him preach or teach. We think, oh man, I, I love that anointing. When I think of Brother Campitella, I think, man, that is a man of God. When I think of Pastor Sansom, I you think that anointing came by remaining in the shallows? I think not. But Brother Trenton, it took some digging. Brother Gisso, it took some, it took some trimming of the, of the trees, of the branches, saying, okay, I know that I've gotten rid of some things, but now it's time to cut that out because it's all about growing. It's all, let's, let's close our eyes. I feel the Holy Ghost right now. I hope you can understand what my heartbeat is today. Come on, what are we doing for the kingdom of God? We, 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 we think all about the numbers. We think all about what I'm going out and doing. I, I'm asking you, when's the last time you had a consistent prayer life? I'm asking you the last time you were just, you know what? I'm going to go to church week after week and I'm not going to miss a service because I'm digging. Because I'm digging and I'm planting and I'm watering. When's the last time you came to church? You said, you know what? I don't care what song they sing. I don't care what I feel. I'm going to lift my hands. I'm going to rejoice. I'm going to praise. That's, that's the kind of growth I'm talking about. I'm talking about a farmer that says, you know what, I'm going to go out every morning and I'm going to do it because that's what I'm called to do. I'm going to go out, I'm going to be faithful and I'm going to be consistent. I may not be as great as my brother or my sister. I, they may have more resources than I do. But you know what? It's not about who is greater. It's not about Paul. It's not about Apollos. I'm going to plant what God has given me and God will give the increase. Come on. Stop looking at your neighbor and wonder what they are doing. I'm asking you what are you going to do about it? What are you going to do about it? Lift our hands. Let's pray. Whatever you want to do, just begin to pray right now. Come on, there are some ministries that are about to flourish in Jesus' name this year. We're going to stand at a, on a platform and we're going to be, be doing something similar that we're doing this year, but the, the report's going to be all together different. There's going to be this somebody went and preached here and they saw a 30, 40, 50 soul revival. I'm telling you, there's growth here. There's growth here. God set us up for growth, but you got to want grace. You got to want the knowledge of God. Come on, he's calling somebody to pursue after it. He's calling somebody to pursue after it. He <laughs> 
Come on, somebody needs to begin digging a well right now until you touch water. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Come on, care enough for your soul to begin praying, God, I want to grow in you. I want to grow in my faithfulness. I want to grow in my consistency. I want to grow in my knowledge of you. Come on, stop looking for another shortcut. Stop looking for a shortcut and start pursuing after the things of God. Come on, it's, it's the only way it's going to happen. It's the only way it's going to happen. Come on, I know it's hard sometimes, but you've got to prune some things in your spirit today. You need to prune some things in your heart today. There's some of you, you haven't fasted in months. I'm telling you, pursue after it. There's some of you, you haven't prayed until you touch the throne of God for months. I'm telling you, pursue after it. You got to hunger for it. You got to have a thirsting for it. see it pursue after it come on press into it right now wherever you're at begin to pursue after it right now hallelujah 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 trying to deal with this church individually he's trying to deal with some people about some things that need to be pruned there's some things that need to be pruned right now we got to cut some things away right now my God I feel your spirit I feel your spirit in here Oh, 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 o